I'm just here for the sound check. I'm going to turn it over to Elia uh, Kostova, Dr. Elia Kostova, and she will introduce and host the uh, the health workshop for the Kesh Foundation. Okay, Elia, are you there? Yes, hello to everyone. I just sorry for the delay of the workshop. It's because my internet connections. I apologize to everyone. So uh, we started from the first part of the workshop. This is the normal skeleton anatomy of human body. And now because of my technical problems, I will try to share my screen and to show you 3D model of the skeleton. Just one second. Okay. I just ask you to tell me if it's visible for you. It's coming up. It's okay? Yeah, it started, yeah. So it is your skeleton. It is the skeleton of the adult person. It is no difference between the female and men. It is your base of uh, structure of your body. Actually, your skeleton is made from 270 bones from your birth and when you get 30 years old some of these bones they are stick together and, and actually you have it finally 206 you may separate the bones of the body and uh, the body different criteria so the first food so the human skeleton can be divided in the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Uh, the earlier, you keep on cutting off. Um, do you we hear you in bits? Okay, now can you hear me now? Somehow. I can hear you, yeah, but somehow you're coming in bits. We don't hear a full now, sentence. Can you hear me now? Now? It's okay? The skeleton you divided into the two parts. It, this is the axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. What is the meaning of that? Because they have a different functions. The axial skeleton is formed by, you may see in this model, this is the vertebral column. Then when you go in front, this is your ribs, all the ribs of your body. And the skull. The skull, I will try to make you visible for you. This is all your bones from your skull. Yeah, Sometimes. this is the base of your skeleton. I think it's really good 3D model to understand how it's built it, our we body. We can't see any pictures. We cannot see any pictures whatsoever. So, can you see? And all the bones, they are connected. Yes. Yeah. Skype. We are trying to go to live stream now. Which channel in live stream? Workshop or the health workshop, sir? Health workshops, yeah. We need the link because we can't see any videos. 
Post it on the chat. Let's see what it is so we can pick it up. Yeah. He's sending it, he's writing it. There it is. Okay, can I follow? Okay, so uh, I told you about the axial skeleton, just I will repeat because it's important. Axial skeleton formed by vertebral columns. You can see them. It's formed from your ribs and make something like, like a box. You see here? Actually, it is your chest part. And other part of the axioskeleton, it is your skull. A ventricular skeleton is formed form pectoral girdle, this is the bone in the middle of your chest. This is the pelvic bones, they are formed your bottom on your body. And this is upper and lower limbs. All the bones, they are connected to each other with ligaments and with, we call this in Latin, sutura. They just stick to each other like in puzzle. They have uh, no uh, something like a stable connection. Everything in your body is flexible and removable and depends what function you have to do and, and the moment about your movement or to handle some weld or gravity or whatever. I, it means the connection between all your bones is just adjustable of your need of your body and uh, to how is it in English and try to uh, um, adjust your body to the environment. That's meaning if you change the gravity or electromagnetic field, everything what you see in this 3D model probably will be changed like a function and like a place to connect to each other. Okay, then what I want to show you is more visible like this. What is the function of your skeleton? So the first function that is your support. All the internal organs, they are placed inside of this structure. Your brain is inside of the structure of school. So mean the school protect your brain. All the internal organs, they are inside of this box of made it from ribs and they protect the internal organs of chest to not be harm and actually the density of the bone and uh, the the weight where they are able to handle it is more than the steel that much they are stronger and uh, made made it in, in a way to protect your internal organs and functions other function of your skeleton if, if uh, it is a movement. So actually when you make only one gest or your hand, you use more than 50 bones if you want to write or if you want to make a point with the finger, you use 
20, 25, 30 bones organized with muscles and ligaments to make this movement. So, other function is of the bones to make a blood. Actually, in the old age, inside of the tubercular bones, this is the long bones in your body, inside of them, you start to make and to, to produce a blood cells from the bone marrow. In the childhood, you are, have this function also in the pelvic bone, part of your vertebra bones, and some part of your chest bone. This is on the middle. But when you go further in your life and reach your 30, you just produce the blood from your tubercular bone in blood marrow. Also, our skeleton have the endocrine regulation. Bone cells release a hormone called osteocalcin, which contributes to the regulation of the blood sugar glucose and the fat disposition. Osteocalcin increase both the insulin secretion and sensitivity in addition to boosting the number of insulin producing cells and reducing store of the fat. Actually, in, the, in your bones, you are able to storage in the bone mat matrix calcium and the bone matrix is, is related actually with calcium metabolism. And in the bone marrow can store, store iron in ferritin, like a formation of ferritin, and it's involved in iron metabolism. However, bones are not entirely made of calcium calcium, but a mixture of chondroitin sulfate and hydroxyapatite. 70% of the bones is made it from calcium, from uh, iron, from chondroitin sulfate and hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is in turn composed of 39 or 40% of calcium, 31% of oxygen, 80% of phosphorus, and 0.2% of hydrogen by mass. Hydroitin sulfate is a sugar made up primarily of oxygen and carbon. So when you have all this knowledge about the molecular and chemical structure of the bone. Now it's easy for you to understand when we are Mr. Cash described about the calcium impact uh, and the iron impact or the impact of oxygen and phosphorus in our body and different kinds of storage of the packages of electromagnetic gravitational field of each chemical element have meaning for you because like a molecule calcium is calcium but like a magraph field and magraph package calcium separates in different um, in, di in different uh, how is it in English in different models. So different energy magraph models, they are stored in different parts of the body and they're related with different functions in the body. So now I will ask Dirk to show, uh, Rick to show you pictures of the bone and, and what is actually the structure of the bone.
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, just pictures. Yeah. I just want to show the structure of the bone. Is that, uh, is that the picture you wanted? Was the uh, long bone structure uh, uh, picture? I, I, I see on the live stream. Okay. okay. So, so this, this is uh, inside of your long tubercular bone. Actually, sorry, this is the internet provider just checking me. Okay. So uh, actually, you separate your long bone of epiphysis. This is your upper part of your bone. And also you have middle part, this is shaft, and next corner of your next end of your bone is other one epiphysis. Through the epiphysis, you connect each bone to another one in connect in conjunction. Then in the top of the epiphysis, you may see you, you have a cartilage. Then you have a spongy bone, and then start the hole in your tubercular bone, what is actually placed your marrow, bone marrow. This bone marrow, how you told you, is a producer of your blood cells. Actually, all the transportation of the all chemical elements is started from your spongy bone. And the spongy bone is made it actually to uh, when, how is it in English? When you, for example, if you jump and all your bones just crash to each other just because they are connected, it will not be broken. This is somehow, this is, um, how is it in English? Just to make uh, less the, the weight of your movement to all the bones, just to, to make it less and to not crash and to reach the bone marrow, what is the in the middle of the bone. And in, in, in that way is uh, all the empty spaces, it, it is similar, uh, similar structure what the um, Armin and Mr. Cash show in the magnetic when he built it the magnetic line magnet gap magnet gap magnet gap this is the same thing if you see they have a cell between all the spongy born they have one cell gap one cell gap one cell gap uh, Elia, we still seeing structure. the skeleton yeah skeleton is see the bone we the, just see the picture of the, the bone model you are able to see on the live stream just rick show it if you want i will show on the main screen just one second so this is the one picture but i don't know you are able to see here like this yeah this is the natural bone this is not a picture, this is just your normal natural bone, just cut it. And now you're able to see the same thing, like a spongy part, and then the all hollow, empty place where is placed your bone marrow. Could you please, other one, Rick? Just show all the pictures what I send it to you and I will explain it. Yeah, yeah, it's no problem, whatever, just. You just put something of else. Just because it's important to see how between the cells have a gaps. In the same model what the Armen shows with the magnet, you know, magnet gap, magnet gap, magnet gap. It's important just to have, uh, to make um, relation between the structure of the human body and what Armin and Mr. Cash describe it in the, with magnet. 
because this is the same thing just when you know anatomy and you replace the knowledge from anatomy to the knowledge of the Mr. Cash, everything is related and perfect, perfectly match. That's why I just wanted to make that much visible to everyone to understand. Just put some one picture. Yeah, this is the same thing. This is the bone structure. So you see again the spongy part, which is actually the more important part. And the all the wall of the bone is also spongy. This is full of holes. And during these holes, how you see in the wall of the bone, this is not only because have to pass the blood vessels, nerves, or lymph, they are made it for purpose. This is not only because of the vessels. And again, this is the whole places in the middle of the bone. He is placed with the, the bone marrow. Yes. And actually, up to the bone marrow and all the vessels which is feeded the bone marrow, they have how the Mr. Cash called the skin. Actually, this is uh, some kind of uh, so teeny, teeny, fragile connective tissue, which is cover the, the bone marrow. And then comes spongy part of the wall. And after the spongy part of the wall of the bone, we have again the skin, which is covered the, all the bone. And in Latin, this is periosteum. Periosteum, this is again a uh, connective tissue, which is teeny, but is full of uh, nerves, ending of the nerves around the bone. And actually, you born uh, like uh, anatomically, uh, anatomical structure. If you, if you, um, Compare with the reactor, which this guy made it, have the same structure, have the core, what is the bone marrow, and then have the wall, what is the covering of the core, and have a two part, upper part like a spongy, and the second part, which is the hole, which is consists the core. And, um, if you if you remember what I show you in the skeleton, I will be share my screen again uh, because it is my screen. Okay, okay. Actually, Mr. Cash is more able to explain it to you what they want to see now. Please Rick, share my screen. Just. I wanted to we, describe. Uh, we Fine. don't see, uh, we only got the skeleton from the beginning. We don't get any pictures of the bone. You have a picture. What you've you been explaining. In the live stream. They are visible on the live stream. Uh, live stream is not adding up. No. Okay, we are there now. Can you yeah, go back to now. where you talk about the skin of the bone, please? Yeah, we have to share again the picture. This is my screen, but can I finish and then I will put you all the pictures and then, okay, this is the skin, sir, periosteum, this is the skin, can you see? This is the connectivity tissue, which is so teeny and fragile and cover all the bone. This is the skin, periosteum. We can't Actually, see inside, anything, we just can't see. Yes, my screen shows. 
Yes, I'm booking the live stream also. And I'm speaking about the picture on the live stream because I see it. And yeah. live stream well, we are trying to look at it we uh, we only see um, the picture of the bone it says bone structure a spongy bone and blood vessels and yellow bone marrow and that's all we see okay sir I'm able to send you the pictures also because but they are visible on the live stream. Yeah, we are on live stream, but we don't see it, it's just not uploading. Yeah. There's just the screen the skeleton on the live on the Skype. On on we the Skype? See. So you are not no, able to see No, we're trying to, to run the... two on it. I think you I think you better switch that off, it's too much load, it's not downloading. Somehow. So you ask me to share the pictures. I cannot. Yes. Okay, she wants to share the picture. That's right. Okay. Just a second. For the people on live stream, it'll uh, just be a minute. We're sorting out the technical detail here. We are we are on the Skype. We are on the Skype because we can't go on the live stream. No, there is nothing coming through. It's taking off. You see what we see in the Skype. Just trying to load up. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, <coughs> so now visible for you. Can you share my screen or no? Yeah, I'm ready. I just put a picture of the bone. If side. you want, I can try to share my screen. Okay, I will try again. Yes. Now it's visible. Okay, we got the picture now. You can speak. Okay. Can you show us where you start with the skin of the bone? Yeah. So this is the 
spongy structure. This is the spongy structure inside of the ball. Is visible. Yeah, this is because of Mr. Cash just to see. Okay, that's very long bone, long one, like your hip bone. It consists two for two. Uh, this is not corner, but two ending, one and second one, and they are called epiphyse. And the end of the ending have cartilago. This is um, part of your joint between, for example, your humerus, your arm, or it is your hip, your femur. And in the way where they make conjunction with other bones, they the nature just put something which is not all the two bones just crash and rub to each other and they call this articular cartilage. Actually, the ending of the other bone started with the spongy bone. And this is made from so small cells. And this is small cells. This is like you explain and Armin, the gap between the magnets. So the spongy bone, the function is, is not only to provide of the vessels inside of the hole of the tubercular bone. It is something which is also mentioned uh, in function of the bone. When you jump or when you uh, walk, it's not that all the weight and all the gravity which you have during your movement just to crash to the bones to each other. You understand? And actually, it is in uh, your part of explanation, Mr. Cash, when you explain when actually the spongy bone exists and what is the function. But this is the same thing I again repeat, like you and Armand spoke about the gaps between the energy packages. It is designed the same like the spongy bone. Then, after the spongy bone part of the tubercular bone is coming whole. The hole is filled with the blood, the bone marrow. And after the bone marrow and all the vessels will defeat the blood, the bone marrow, it's coming the well of bone marrow. But actually, this is the thinny skin which is covered cover it, the marrow bone. And after, after that, it's coming again the wall of the bone, which is against some kind of spongy structure. And after that, it's coming the periosteum. Periosteum is, is a skin, skin of each bone. Each bone is covered fully from periosteum. It is the teeny, fragile connective tissue, which is covered of the bone, each one of 270 bones. So actually all the peri periosteum is, is full of nerves and nerves bottom. I mean, in, in anatomy we call when some nerve reach the muscle or reach the bone or some other tissue, they make something like a bottoms. And, and when comes some chemical elements from nerves and uh, the function of this chemical element is to activate the muscles or to stop function of, of the muscle, they comes through this conjunction between the nerves and the muscle. The same things have in periosteum also. Okay, then go, I, I go to the next picture. Actually, this is the anatomically really picture of the human bone just cut it in the middle and you are able to see all the 
structure of the spongy bone actually in the anatomy is called lamella and they are organized in the different just one second in, in, in the different position you are able to see some some part of them they are go vertically some part of them they are go horizontally some part of them they just cross each, each other in, in in that way they made it a huge amount of the holy places inside of the spongy bone and how you see in in the wall again we have a spongy bone a spongy structure and then we go to the density actually this density part of the bone just have more protection function uh, and all the functions of the bone just they are inside of the spongy part in in the upper end and in in the bottom end of the bone and inside everything is covered with this spongy structure of the bone then actually this is the microscopic picture of the spongy bone so this all the lamella they are organized in that way and how you see they just form it the gaps gaps hole like a caves it's like that and if you want to storage and after that mr cash will be explain you how the the limbs go in and go through actually the limb storage here in this holes. I call them caves because they are looks like actually like caves. Then this is a, again anatomically picture. The same how I explained it to you in the previous one. I just will wait Rick to change the picture from the live stream. Uh, okay, and actually, in interesting is uh, the second picture. This one, what I told you about the weight. So when this is the humerus, this is the hip, hip uh, bone, and how the goes the gravitation. Actually, the gravitation I will show you then in the 3D skeleton. Started from your school through all your spine then comes here and two and two hip bones actually in this point and through the hips comes to the inner part what is the density part of the wall how you see and then split it in only three parts in the bottom corner of the hip bone and then goes through your more more wide bone in your <clears throat> in your leg and then go to the ankle and then go to your height uh, in in your heel which is the one it is the one point the second it, it, on your foot actually it, in uh, how is it in english so far this is the metatarsical uh, joint in the first finger and in, in, in the metatarsical joint of the five finger. Only three points in your soul handle all the gravity of your body. And it is so important how the gravity goes through the, the body because the body organizes the density and actually the density is caused about the storage of the calcium and the calcium salt. So when you have more gravity, then you have the more storage of the calcium in this picture. So actually the inner wall on the tubercle ball is more dense than the outer side wall because the way of gravity goes through this part. And everything has a meaning if, if our body we just have to know why uh, we just have to know the anatomy and the physiology of each part and when you uh, decide and and when you read then the plasma part of the 
books of the Mr. Cash, then it's everything is matched. So the the last picture of this screen is just showing how he spreaded the vessels. Actually, you see some kind of them, they are just finished in these caves in the Sponky Park, <clears throat> in the bottom and, and in the bottom and the top, and then goes through all the marrow bone just to feed it. And again, they pack by Sponky Park on the wall. Actually, all the bones, they are just full of holes. They are not completely, uh, how is in English, plate. They are just full of holes. Okay, I will see the next one. Uh, you know that. It's the same. It's the same. I think from the pictures is that. I just wanted to share um, the screen of the skeleton. I'm telling you why. So now, when you see in the 3D model of the skeleton, uh, Mr. Kesha explained it to me. So we have actually the three uh, generators. One is in, in the case of our brain. Second one is inside of the chest box. And the other one is in our abdomen. Actually, we have trinity in our system. So when, um, what I want to say, when you look at the skeleton, you see the main generator, what is the in liquid state. Actually, our brain this is not solid matter. This is the liquid state. When you open your your skull, this is liquid state. And you see the bones on your skull, they are so dense. And actually, they are flexible because they are connected to each other with this sutura we call in Latin sutura. They are just shaved like a puzzle. They are able to open and they are able to go in. Then, the next reactor, our heart and everything around is plated in this box in the middle. And in the top is our abdomen. It's actually, you see, how the pelvic bones make a cave here. This is our place where it is the place that the third reactor of our body. So everywhere we, when we have, where we have a reactor, we have a density of the structure. You see, our skull is so dense, and then the ribs, and then the third one is here. How the pelvic bones, they are fully protectable from the reactors inside. And see what is the perfect cave, actually. I just try to figure out the skeleton model to show you. See, you may see on this part, you may see on this part is fully protected outside cave. I think it's more visible like that. You see, this is like a cave. Place it inside. If you put the model like this, you are able to see inside of the ribs. It's again like a cave. You see? You put inside. Okay, I think about the anatomy and the moment, this is okay for you. If you have some questions or if you ask me, if you need to ask me something, I'm here to answer you. Some questions? Perhaps someone from the go-to meeting has a question. Can you hear us? Uh, we seem to be losing all the conversations. We tried the live stream and we stayed on the Skype. It's in bits. 
Can you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear us clearly? Mm, I can hear you. The, the uh, problem problem with with can you hear me? Just one second. Krasimir Kosovo. Has, has some, some questions, questions on live stream. Hello. Uh, hello. Um, who? Uh, what's the question? Yes. Let me interpret it. It was it Krasimir Kostov yeah. who asked yeah. on uh, the live stream, are there all uh, holes in the marrow filled with something? In the spongy bone, bone in the spongy yeah. bone, he means. Question. Yeah, actually, they are filled with all the vessels of, of uh, artery, veins, lymph, and the nerves. But from the plasma side, Mr. Cash will explain it, what is actually happened in the spongy part of the bones. Actually, there in this old case, happen all the, uh, how is it in English, interaction between the bone marrow and bones and the everything all the chemicals which is come in the body through the vessels, like a chemical elements and like a next explanation about the bones, Mr. Cash will give you, and then you you will understand why I explain it you about the anatomy of skeleton in that way. I just wanted to help. Mr. Cash to explain after that, and it will be more easy for you for you to understand his explanation if you know on the beginning what is the anatomy of the skeleton. Okay, so Mr. Cash, if you want to follow with explanation about the magra anatomy of skeleton. Okay, thank you very much, Elia. It took a long time to get the first one going. You've done a lot yeah. of hard work trying Sorry, to well, put it sure. together. Um, can can I be heard clearly, or is it just us who is getting um, bites of uh, speak? Can you hear us clearly? Yes, I hear. I'm here, I think, okay. Okay. Um, so, I try to start from somewhere um, in a way that uh, um, under help, uh, just one second, get the battery, please. Uh, on the health side of the uh, Cash Foundation, we work. Uh, the whole principle and uh, the whole pattern of the work of the uh, health side of the foundation, or the way I work on the health side, um, is that um, is there a need for an organ? Is there a need for a piece? Is there a need for a function in the body? And one of the main things to ask is that is there a need for a bone structure in the in the in the in the in the body of the man? Would the man be able to function the human body? or any entity, without a bone structure. So, when you start 
asking that question. Then you start looking, what are the reasons for existence or production or creation in the process of the evolution of that piece in the body, in the structure. As Elias said, uh, we start a life with some 270 odd bones at point of birth and uh, or inceptions when the bone structure starts coming together. And around adulthood we come to about 206 pieces plus odd pieces here and there. But why the body merges, joins, dispose of, adds to 70 odd bones in the life cycle. The other process is that in the body of the man, what is the real purpose, what is the real reason for the structure of the bone? You can call it different things, you can call it a bone marrow, you can call it the spongy part, you can call it a rib bone, a hip bone, uh, the bone for the skull and everything else. The main process before you start anything is to ask, as I said, is there a need for the bone, the bone structure? And then go back into the operation of the brain and understand why the physical part of the brain has decided to create such a bone. So, what this means is that what is the function part of the brain has this why can't we live, can't we survive, can't function with a full intelligence without a bone? The bone structure of the man is no different than the bone structure of a fish. The only difference is that as we were created in the same kind of process, the fin, the tail fin has a split into a half, we call it two legs, and the side fins has become the arms and the fingers. And if you look at the rest, the head of the fish has moved slightly higher, we call it the neck, but the rest is exactly the same as a fish, as same as any other animals. Why did, in the process of evolution, man or body of entity of the fish decided to make different bones? And how this process started? To me, to the work which I do in the health side of the Foundation, there is no need for a bone. For a man, the soul to exist. But, when you allow the emotional part to exist, and the emotional part has connected itself to a leech part, which is the physical part, compromises has been made. So, what does this mean? This means, I'm prepared to receive energy, if the leech part, which is the physical part, uh, can support the life cycle which means, okay, I need lung to support it, my life, so I have to protect it. So, there comes the rib cage. And then, it comes into the process of why the heart is sits next to the lung. Why heart and lung sit on the upper part of the body? Why don't we have our lungs and our toes and our feet? why the bone marrow and the lymph 
and the heart and the lung all work through one pump, which we call the heart. Where did the compromise come? Why the process has started? The whole entity of man does not need the bone structure. But, in trying to get different functions and usage, the maximum use from what can support the energy side for the emotional part of the brain, has been used to the full capacity. And it's been the best efficient way it can be done. The point is that, when at the point of inception, when the first cells are made, when the main structure starts, who decides, or where in the structure of the life, decides that there is going to be a conversion or absorption or transfer of energy into calcium that becomes a bone. So, when the fetus is created, there are no bones in it. What does decide? Who decides? What combination decides? That, first of all, the calcium sequence comes in, then the pattern of the production of the bones come in, in what sequence, and then, what apparatus is needed for this thing to survive on its own, to regenerate on its own. So, the point comes in that, does the DNA carry the information for production of the bone? Or does RNA informs the DNA, this is what you got to do, and the DNA sets up the procedure for physicality to come in. Then, if one understands this process, then you can understand the structure of the bone for each part of the body of the man, or any animal. Bone is the physicality of the man, it's, it's exclusivity of the man on this planet. So, what has led what has caused, what has generated the production of the bone, the calcium. Where does the information come in for lymph, which is within the womb of the mother, as different form, in the blood form, to become as part of the lymph of the child, and then that information transfers the lymph in its density, gravitational magnetic field structure, into a bone of the hip, and a bone of um, skull, and the rest. So, if you look at this way, then you'll find out, you look at the whole structure of the man, the bone, the muscles, the attachment, and the process, in a totally different way, in a much simpler way, and in a way that you can interact with the bone structure. You're born in some part of the world, where you are supposed to be short, due to the climate, or to have a broader hip bone, because of the way of living and the condition. Then you move to another part of the world, where the structure of the bone is different, and if a child is born from the marriage or mixture of these two, different type of bone, what decides the new formation?
what kind of bone, what kind of a structure of the bone, and how this bone come together to be, as a plasma, then as a matter, then in mud formation of the matter. Then it comes to one point. The structure of the bone is decided by the emotional part of the brain to guarantee the survival of the physical part that can guarantee the survival of the emotional part. So, in every part of the human body, for every operation, we see a gland. We see the etheric gland, we see glands over the kidneys, but why not, why we don't see any glands for operation of the bone? Why the brain has decided that the operation of the bone will be controlled by the emotional side directly over the physical part? So, bone structure has an importance in the, the most important existent part that is so vital that the brain has never decided to divide itself as a gland specifically for the bones. It is so important that the brain, the emotional part, directly over its physical part controls everything to do with the bone. Because without it, the emotional part will not exist. And it's the only place where the emotional part has decided to control everything. A bone structure is the most important, vital part of existence. And why the brain has done such a decision that to be there? It has put everything in one safe, in a hard safe. It's very much like you put your most important documents in the safe and you lock it up. You buy a fireproof safe and you buy a bulletproof safe. This is exactly what the emotional part of the body has done over the evolution. The bones are the safes of the body. The bone marrow. If the body gets attacked, and germs or viruses or anything attacks the physical part, where is it made? Where is your defense technology? Where is your defense protection? Bone marrow, in the safe. Where it is the less possibility of damage. Where does your conversion and production of the red blood cells and white blood cells are done? Without them, the heart cannot operate, the physicality part cannot operate, the emotional part dies. Operation is kept in the safe. Where does the whole structure of the operation of the control of all the systems, chemically needed majority is produced in and kept in the safe? in the bone structure. So, when you're the boss, and your life depends on what's in the safe, you don't give the key to somebody else to control it. If the world of medicine understands this connection, then they will understand how easily, through the emotional part, they can control all the diseases through the bone and the structure of the bone, the bone marrow, red blood cells and the rest. This is how you divide it, you call it the skull, you call it the hip bone, you call it the rib bone. In operation, 
there is no difference between any of the bones. All the bones produce in a very minute way or very large quantity or effectively in a powerful way, the same kind of material which are needed in the vicinity which they are working on. Or they are responsible for to protect. Then, when you do this, you create channels of supply and channels of disposal. When Elia shows the structure of the bone with all these soft bones and curvature bones and holes and uh, different strands inside the bone, there is a reason for every single one of these the strands. There is a reason for every one of the cavities in a sponge. They are not random. If you understand the nanotechnology, you will understand the structure of the bone to be in nano layers. The small gravitational fields in different holes, different conditions, which they create, they absorb they, cre they create a condition to absorb or gravitate different materials to a different strength to become part of the lymph, part of the blood, part of the cells which are produced within the bone marrow. I've said this before in different talks. Um, Elia showed a bone, and it shows the gravitational line from the hip down to the knee. If you understand what this line of the contact means, you will understand why your body creates a bone with a high density in a certain places, and then soft inside. Because the hard side, the soft side, they create a balanced field, which for example, absorbs surplus phosphor from the lymph, or gravitational magnetic field of the phosphor. Then, that, plus the calcium, which is converted from the lymph into calcium, due to the vibration of the bone, gets added to what? Gets added to your uh, T-cells, B-cells. If you look at all the amino, what do you call it, uh, immune system cells, which come out of the bone, they all have a calcium link. And with them, they have a phosphor link. The reason for phosphor, look at the structure of the DNA. The body, the emotional side, wants to guarantee that its information kept in its RNA, in conjunction with the existence of the DNA. That's the reason you see, you find that in the bone marrow. At the same time, the emotional side wants to guarantee its existence. And calcium is important. So, it makes all the time connections between the immune system and the bone connection, which is the calcium. So, Elia explained to you, from the human side, the physicality of the, the skeleton. But, from real point of existence, a skeleton, especially the way is built around the movement of the body of the man, is literally the most fundamental part. 
because it carries the phosphor, it carries the cal uh, calcium, it carries the immune system, so it can guarantee the reproduction and conversion and adjustment into RNA and the DNA for the next generation. So, the way we look at it, from the space technology, then we can replicate all the plasmas which are created on the different names within the bone marrow. But, then you don't need to fight, you don't need to move, you don't need to create a bone marrow. You reach the emotional part of the brain, which knows what is wrong and what has been changed, and through it, you reach the bone marrow. And then you guarantee the survival. So, first of all, it has to be understood that why the bone are created for man, for the body of any animal. We have got two, uh, too technical to look at the physicality, but we have lost the whole uh, understanding of the purpose of the bone. Then, when you look at the bone in this, this way, you will see why and how the emotional part has transferred the knowledge to the physical part, and at the same time, the only piece of the whole human, or any being on this planet, which is the, which has got the bone structure, is left with the boss, with the emotional part. So, when we start talking about the structure of the bone, we speak about the control system in conjunction with the brain operation. Not a bone, a skeleton that is there to hold the weight of the, uh, the hip, or the weight of the human skull, or the shape of the bone because these are all physicality. Every dentation, every indentation, every crack, every hole, which is made in any part or within the structure of the bone, is total physicality. Where the body in the brain has found, or has preferred to be the easiest way to be done. If you look at the blood vessels, which come from the bone. Where are those blood vessels? The immune system will not work. The lymph system will not work. Because one pump, which is the heart, is sucking the uh, residual leftover the sewage work from the body out. What is body is not needed, what does body does not need. And in this process, it sucks the food, the, what do you call the nourishment, the energy, through the walls of the intestine, into the lymph. So, then this pump, as it's sucking blood to circulate, the same circulation which goes through the section of the bone, will suck the lymph through the bone structure. And in passing through the nano layers, according to the need of the body from the brain, which the information comes directly, the necessary materials are produced, converted, added, and sent out through the bone, into the blood cells, into the lymph, back to the body. 
So, in a way, the bone structure is a conversion factory. But the whole operation is run on one conway belt. And that conway belt only works with one motor. The heart, the chambers of the heart, the way the chambers of the heart are set. Why you have certain bone structure, even for even short time, within the heart of the body of the man. There is a reason for everything. Why in some diseases, we find the calcium gets deposited within the fiber of the heart, which to the function of the heart leads to internal bleeding of the heart and death. You have to realize why the brain, why the bone, takes the shapes, different shapes, but in fact the function of all the bones are exactly the same. But, they are like localized section, as they protect, at the same time they service and provide the, what, they, what is needed in the local area. And then you have a master, which is the backup system, which is the, uh, the main bone in the leg. Whatever is needed extra, the backup provides, and it keeps in the store, and it keeps providing. But, the rest of the bone structure, being your upper arm, being the rib, being the, the little bone on the tip of your finger, operate exactly the same way, and they produce exactly the same kind of thing, even might not be visible to the physical eye. So, the bone from the space technology is a conversion factory. And then, when you understand this conversion, how this conversion is done, why it's done, how the process is done, then it brings the whole space technology from nanomaterial, from the GANS point of view, from the energy production, all in order. This is why, if you have listened to the workshops and the talks I've given before, always say, NASA spends billion to go and search into space and send different things up and different space agencies to find out what happens in the space. The, in Cash Foundation, we treat the body of the man as a galaxy. Everything is in it. Whatever you want to know about deep space, is within the deep structure of the body of the man. They spend billions, and we do very little, but we achieve much more information, much faster and in an easier way. And we have shown and we show how this easy way is out. There is no difference. If you want to understand the working of the bone, just go back in the workshop which was done yesterday by knowledge seekers. The nano layers inside the copper or outside the copper, is exactly the same structure as the nano layers inside the bone of the man. And we've been told, I was talking to the knowledge seekers today in the, in the lab. I said, for a long time, everybody has said to us, proof of concept, show us something that they can be believe. And yesterday, you lot have worked six months here and everything else, and you showed the light. They said, even if you can show a light, we believe in it. And yesterday, they showed the light, they showed how they store energy in a battery, and they nothing. Because as a human being, you don't even believe in what you see and what you ask. So, you, to understand the function of the bone, you have to understand the function of the nanomaterials. 
you have to understand the function of the gravitational and magnetic field within the nanomaterials. Why you put a copper, nano-coated, with zinc-coated metal, and you continuously produce CO2. What does copper has got to do with zinc and what's got to do with CO2? Because in the nano layers of the copper, which was produced, conditions are created which balances equals to copper oxide or calcium CO3. In nano layers. Absorption and extraction. Now convert the same knowledge into the pores, in the holes, in the strands of the nano layer of the bone. And then you understand how in the same structure you extract phosphor from the lymph. Why you extract all the necessary um, amino acids from the lymph and once they come to the bone marrow they become, what you call them, T-cells and B-cells. The conversion is done due to all these processes and the holes in nanostructure and in the total structure of the bone. So, you want phosphor? There is no phosphor coming through the lymph, going through the holes and just appearing in the, in the bone marrow. The energy of the phosphor, which is sucked through the walls of the, um, or transferred through the walls of the intestine, which is within the uh, lymph structure, once matches the gravitational magnetic field within the nanoporosity layers of the bone, manifests itself as a phosphor in the bone marrow or it sucks in to come, to become the bone marrow, as it's going, as the lymph is going through the holes of the bone. Then you understand, there is not a way to handle the structure of the bone in the physicality, the way it was explained by Elia. You have arm bones, you have uh, finger bones. These are all to guarantee two things. First of all, that energy, and you can move to a position that the energy can be absorbed by the lungs that the emotional side can exist. And secondly, the bones are there to make sure the function and the holding that the, if you take all the bones, the finger doesn't drop off that he cannot lift the foot, that he goes in the mouth, that he can guarantee the physical parts of the body to survive, that he can guarantee as a payoff for the energy to be absorbed by the emotional part. Then the whole picture of the bone structure changes from a scientific point of view, from a space point of view. Do other creatures have bones and, uh, what do you call it, cartilages in their body in the space? There are structures which support these things, but not calcium. But why do we do this? Why do our, our body chooses this way of uh, conversion? And we say they have nerves in it. As Elia was saying, there are nerves within the system of the bone structure. Bones are created through emotions. Bones, the structure of the bones has a direct effect in the emotional part of the body of the man. Because if you have to be short, to guarantee the survival, because the opposite sex, which is the chooser, likes a short, so in the 
the structure of the culture, the structure of the environment, the emotional part instructs the physical part, in this area we stay short, because this way we can guarantee to be chosen to pass on the information and the, put, and the gene guarantee pool. Every structure of the bone, every the shape of the finger of the bone, is directly connected to the need and demand of the emotional part. And if the world of science understands this, then one will understand why in the old age, we become frail and we have, we have problems with our bones. This is all because in so many ways, the body doesn't want to exist after a point. And the emotional part guarantees that through the bone, through the red cells, through the white cells, through the, I mean, the immune system which is kept in the safe. A lot of reasons man dies, or man chooses to die, or the body chooses to finish with the physical part, is that the emotional part does not see any reason to be connected to live and the physical part which is controlled through the bone marrow does the job trying to end it in one way or another. Once the man finds a purpose for life in a way of no greed but being pleasure to be alive, man will live like any other creatures in the universe, six, seven hundred thousand years, two thousand years, the way man does on this planet. There is no difference between a tree which lives two thousand, three thousand years in the jungle and a man. Why not? Man cannot live that long. It's just that we have chosen and that fingerprint is embedded in the structure of the bone. So, from creation point of view, The way the structure of the body of the man is, bone is the most important part of the body exists. Even though you cut the limbs off or the arms off, you'll find out you still have immune system. What happened people which have both amputation or full amputation of arms and legs, they still live, they still have a life, they still uh, create the uh, blood red cells and white cells. Where do they get it from? The responsibility gets passed on to the work of exactly the other bones in the body which do the same thing. So, the physicality in the position of the bone goes back to the emotion. And every bone in the body produces and has the capability to produce the full DNA structure replication of the RNA. As we've seen, people are born without hands, without arms and legs, and they still have a full heart operation. They still get all the diseases that other people get. So where does the bone marrow come from then? Where does the immune system come that we say is dependent on the on the the main bone and the on the leg? Because the emotional part to guarantee existence allows the other bones within the body to do the same operation and carry on with the same thing. Then you will see in a lot of diseases like cancers, certain cancers immediately show themselves in certain positions as a secondary cancer on the bones of the body. Then you understand that has an emotional effect. And that's why in so many things we call as a bone cancer, we see for a specific position, for a specific diseases, what you call the bone cancer shows itself. So, as space 
scientist as a space knowledge on the health. We look at the bone, in its totality operation, not in numbers and the shape. So, in the next stage, when we talk health in respect to bone, we speak about how to create gravitational magnetic fields within the bone structure that can be accepted or change the gravitational magnetic field of the nano layers within the bone structure, which can lead to production of what is needed to boost the immune system or to boost the T cells or the red blood cells. Then the approach to health is become totally different. It moves from the uh, physical interaction to plasma and to plasmatic interaction. And then this way is much, much easier to solve a lot of problems for, for the health part side. So, <clears throat> Uh, you explain the bone as a physical part, and these are the holes, these are the where the blood cells come, this is where the yellow bone marrow is. From the space technology point of view, health side, we look at what cavity leads to production of certain gravitational magnetic field that converts the plasma within the lymph, to the matter needed for the survival and production of the bone marrow, of the red blood cells. Ask always a single question, how come nothing comes into the bone from blood cells, from blood point of view, from a, a different way? but this container continuously supplies everything out. Because when you look at the structure of the bone, the structure of the bone is a big sieve. And in that sieve, as the lymphs pass through, according to the position of the lymph, according to the gravitational magnetic field of the environment as the uh, lymph goes through, the material needed is converted and produced. And then you receive red blood cells in the bone marrow. There is no factory, nobody sitting inside the bone marrow and producing red cells, now is the blood of, uh, what do you call it, white cells. And now this is the lymph, and now this is something else. So, the bone structure is a total gravitational magnetic field in the nano layers, exactly like a copper wire as we shown in the energy production. And when you put different energies together, different gravitational magnetic field together in a specific way, which the brain in the emotional part decides in totality of its work, then you understand the work of the bone. This goes back to a lot of people saying that man uses 5% or 10% or 15% of the brain. And then, when you look at the brain, why is it so big and no part of it is rotten? Because if you use 15%, the other 85% should be, it should be rotting away, because it's not used. All these parts of the brain, which physical part, which appears to man is not used, is continuously monitoring most part of it, the operation, the production, and the running of the bone structure. Major part, major part of the brain, the physical part, is for development of the frequencies, what you call to convert, of the whole structure, of the porosity, of the size, of the strands, of the movement, of every single bone in the body of the man, because without the bone, the emotional side cannot exist. Maybe for the first time, all these people who come with this nonsense that the body, the brain is not doing anything, functioning anything, is just there, understand that a major part 
of the operation of the brain, the working of the brain, goes in to look after, reproduce a precise size, shape, position, strength, strand, within every single bone of the man. Because without the bone, there is no immune system, there is no blood cells, and the blood, red blood cells are necessary for the heart, for the lung, to be able to transfer energy from the lung into the man. So, it is so vital for the brain, that controls itself without to somewhere else, because the emotional side, as Elia said, the bone, within the bone, the red blood cells are created. And as they pass along, the emotional part of the body dies, or cannot function correctly. Then you understand, why even the emotional side, has protected a bone we call the skull for itself. Then the whole structure, the whole understanding of the world of health changes in respect to the working of the bone. Every bone structure is a depository bank for certain need of the body at the point of the need. So, the brain knows what it needs, when it needs it, and it has to guarantee his own survival. So, the operation, a major part operation of the brain, runs on a daily basis, every second, in looking after, changing, allocating, converting, extracting, supplying the bone, material to the bone, and material from the bone for rest of the body. Now, the world of health, the world of bone structure looks totally different. And this is why in the Keshe Foundation, in the health side, they, they say or they tell us we do magic, so we just use water. Because if you can, send the right energy package, which is getting absorbed and transferred through the intestine to the lymph, to go through the bone marrow, you control the box, you control the base, you control the intestine. So, you can affect the rest of the chain work. They tell us that you only use water and air, because you never understood the essence of the creation and the creation of the man. Through the water, we decide what goes through the bone structure to become your immune system, which in a way affects your own emotions, that affects your health. then the rest of the things we do around the body is just physicality adjustment. When I can control the energy level which it goes through your lung, through the air you breathe, through the cups we provide, then I can give enough to the emotional side that it makes the right connection information to the lymph, at the point of passing through the bone, to create the right immune system, the right insulin, the right material, for the rest of the body to live a perfect life. So, the physicians, the doctors who go and try to find different antibiotics and different materials to change the, uh, this disease and that disease, they start to understand. 
the production, the conversion, the strength of every fiber within the bone is decided within the intestine when you pass the energy through the wall of the intestine. Then you understand you do not need to feed food to the man because through the same plasma condition you transfer the right plasma in the right position by literally the water is a package gimmick to be able to transfer this plasmatic energy into the body to join the lymph. So, in most of the time, the people who have used that health technology of the Keshe Foundation, I always tell them, when you breathe from the cups, the minute the air from the cup has touched your lips, the information and the energy is transferred. It's the same thing with when you drink the water. Because by the time you drink the water, the whole energy has passed through, instead of going through your intestine, to your body, through your, um, what do you call it, uh, the mouth already has joined your lymph operation. So, the bone structure needed to guarantee the survival of the emotional part. And it's so fundamental that, as I said, the boss has decided, I keep the control. The functions which are not important, but they're auxiliary, the body has decided to allocate the glands in different part of the body, because it's too busy. But, the work of the brain is so important for it to be responsible for the whole bone structure. And now you understand very easily why in so many ways our emotion decides the shape of our bone, the size of our bone, the way we produce cells, the way we protect ourselves, the way we uh, decide the length of the life. So, when next time you look at the bone, just don't look at the physicality, it's there because it carries the gravity, or it's there to protect the heart. It's there, because the brain has decided, this is where I need it to guarantee my survival, and if it needs four legs, I put it, make it a donkey, if it swims in the fish, uh, in the sea, I don't need to give it legs, it's too hard to swing, two legs to swim, I join the two legs together, I call it a fin at the end. I always say, stand in front of the mirror, and look at yourself, you see a fish with a split tail, you call it two legs. And you see two fins, side fins changed, otherwise there is no difference. And the same principle of working of the bone is the same for a fish, for a man, for a donkey, or any creatures which is dependent on the survival of the live, true bone structure. Otherwise, you'll be amib and in single cell. You don't need bone structure, but you still have intelligence. Now, any questions? Um, there is a question regarding uh, what is osteoporosis in regards to what you're you're describing mr Kesh ask them what do they call osteoporosis I can put a, a picture of the bone structure on the live stream um, no 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 ask what is, what is explained as the osteoporosis in the world of medicine? 
define it or how has it been defined? Maybe Elia can explain to us. Yes, osteoporosis is the last level of calcium in bones. And then they start to be more fragile and easy to be broke. And have different kinds of levels of osteoporosis, depends on density of bones, and have devices where they measure the density of bones. And depends of deep level, they started from osteopenia, and then when the level go up, this is some kind of measurement of the density of the bone, and then separate to the up to four or five levels. So the first is osteopenia, and then started osteoporosis, first grade, second grade, third grade, and so on. And mostly osteoporosis related with less level of estrogen and uh, the age of the woman when she reached the climax age up to 40, 45, 50, when the estrogen levels go down, started uh, to get um, symptoms from osteoporosis and uh, the normal treatment in traditional medicine, they give it the calcium tablet with estrogen. So the traditional medicine believes that estrogen hormone helps to storage calcium in bone. You need more can you Can you, can you explain it around what age does this happen? When the woman reach the climax, when the period uh, menstruation just stop it, mostly related with that. Or if if something uh, is wrong in the ho in the hormone uh, homeostasis in woman, I mean the. Um, Hormones which related or to, with reproductive system of the woman, or if if do, some diseases related do, with genes. Do you see this mainly in men, or is it just in women? It is so rare in men. Actually, they get the osteoporosis if they have hormonal hormonal disbalance also, or if they use some kind of Diuretics. This is the drug which make the urination uh, increase the urination, and they mostly use it when they have heart diseases, uh, which is related with dysfunctioning of the pump function of the heart. Uh, the name of this diuretic is spironolactone. If someone use it, just to know. And uh, spirino, spironolactone is like diuretic drug, just increase estrogen level in the men, and actually also they have a gynecomasty. I mean, the glandular mame, the chest just just growing like in a, a woman. Mostly it's related with that in men, but it, it is so rare. Actually. Uh, Calcium impact, traditional medicine belief, is related with estrogen. Can you tell us which bone usually get affected by this? Hip. They measuring hip, and also they measuring uh, sacral part of the spine. And now they have a new kind of uh, scanners from osteoporosis and they use it, the vertebra also. They have to have uh, uh, density, these bones. It's not that much spongy. But it's mainly traditionally connected to the hip bone. Yeah. And sometimes okay. they measure in the heel also. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The reason for this, scientifically, is again goes back to the allocation and the point of need. 
During the menstruation, the body, as I've explained in other parts of the workshops, the body looks for what is available, needed for the conversion in the fetus, and somewhere where everything is near to. As I said, body, each bone has its own usage at the point of need is being placed in that way. During the menstruation cycle, every time that the body gets ready to give life, as I said, and I explained this in a lot of my talks, is that the body provides everything for the party. It doesn't wait till the party, the guests arrive, and then going looking for, but makes everything available, ready, that when, if the inception comes and the fetus is produced or started, everything is available for the fetus. Part of this is calcium, needed, in a form of the GANS, in the form of ready, produced, absorbed, um, gravitational magnetic field plasma. Where is the womb of the woman? In the cavity of the hip. So, in the cycles, 12 times a, month, a year, the body takes a ready converted, what we call like a animal we choose, or the mothers we chew the food, and then they give it to the child, because it's ready, can be digested. The body, the brain, instructs the um, structure, the hormones, and the rest of the uh, operating part of the reproduction cells, to go to places and take what is needed for the party for production. And uh, in the structure of the life of the woman, the hip is the closest place where large amount of calcium can be deposited and can be used in the soft tissue immediately when it's needed every month for the inception of the child. So, every month, the body takes a piece out of the hip. And this creates cavities, this creates weaknesses. So, these are the holes. These are the what they call as the process. This is the every time, and that's why men do not reproduce. Women do that in, in, in the womb. So, as part of the cycle of the menstruation, every time the body goes to the bank, to the, to, to what you call it, the storage place, where you have already converted calcium, which is in the heap, and brings it ready into the womb, in the structure for the child to be born, that is ready in the plasma, of the lymph of the mother, that for the child to have it ready for it to be used. So that's why we see this. This is only with women, and we see it in the what they call it the porosity of the uh, of the bone. And if we, men go through the same cycle, we'll have the same disease. And partially we see it in the. The spinal cord, in this what they call in the spine, in the lower spine, in some cases, and on the top of the upper bone of the legs, is through the same process. When the body is weak, um, this uh, process that the, the there is not enough calcium available from the hip, so the the structure goes further up to where it's soft. Calcium is ready for it to be ready for the menstruation for the cycle of the child to be born. In the case uh, in 19, no, in 2005, 2004, 2005, we have shown that um, uh, we see the same kind of uh, structure of the prostate and the weakness in the man when the prostate cancer goes into the hip. The same side of cavity, weakness of the hip uh, appears itself to show. And through the process we developed, we have managed to literally um, link up or seal or allow the body to reproduce calcium in the area of the hip to strengthen up the head. So, in cases 
with a new understanding, you have, you can produce, we've done this in two occasions as a trial, you create um, a condition where, uh, through like a seat, you create an environment that in a way like a bone fracture, where the calcium comes when you have a broken bone and it heals, or you, you don't, the healing is that you make a connection between the two sides with a new calcium, so you don't get a straight fusing, it's like a lump on the, on the point of the fracture. We have seen in the x-rays an MRI done in the hospital in Holland, that we get these uh, processes uh, like filled up with new calcium, but it's not filled up, it's just like, uh, it's like a little hill, little mountains that the calcium come and get, uh, trying to cover the hole. And in that process, we've seen the strengthening of the hip, uh, bone. So, this disease comes only through menstruation and through because the body, the brain instructs the body to have a ready available calcium uh, for the birth of a child and it happens mainly in women and now we see uh, the, the movement into the spinal cord and even on the upper legs uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, upper bones of the leg, is just totally because of the diet which has changed and there is not enough uh, uh, right um, calcium plasma available for the production of the child, or what do you call it, the birth of the child to be supported, so softer tissues further up on the internal side of the spinal, uh, spinal bones are used and we see that in that kind of post. So, it is, with the new present knowledge, this, uh, the, the hip can be, uh, what you call, supported by the allowing, creating environment, that you create a false uh, environment, that the body changes the lymph calcium into the calcium, which has got the right gravitational magnetic field on the bone structure of the hip. And we don't see this with any other, more or less, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, condition. It only happens because the womb of the mother or a woman sits within that environment near a soft, um, re available ready calcium, which is the hip, and it takes from it, so it makes indentation on it, and this indentation becomes like a porosity, because as you take it out, uh, it does not get, um, uh, replenished by the same, uh, what do you call it, same kind of calcium, because by the time it comes, it's like our nanomaterials, another piece is already built on it, so the cavity stays. The, the creation of capacity prosody with this uh, disease is very much in, very, can be explained like in nano layers, if the scientists look at it, is uh, is position, whole position. So, the new calcium covers the top of the old hole and, and the material, so the hole in between stays. It's like a little um, grooves which uh, uh, Elia showed us in the structure of little cap, uh, cavities in the bone structure. This is only to do with the reproduction cycles and that's why it's connected to the hormones because uh, it's connected to the estrogens and the hormones, because uh, you call gravitational magnetic field trigger comes, that there's a time for a cycle of the birth, that triggers the, <coughs> what do you call it, um, the release and absorption of the calcium from one point and release to the fetus in the womb of the mother. And when the menstruation cycle stops, there's a disturbance in this, and then the processes are there, there is nothing can be done, because the holes cannot be refilled. There is a misconception in the world of um, uh, uh, medicine, in a way, of public, is that uh, when your physical menstruation is finished, everything else in your body stops regarding the reproduction. It's not so. Even though you don't go through the menstruation cycle, the body still goes and picks up the cavity and the hole, create the holes, but the, because the hormones are not there to reorder the, uh, what do you call it, 
the filling up over there, you start seeing these holes. So, if you are 90 years old and your menstruation stopped when you were 40, the holes are still getting made in past 50 years every time your menstruation cycle month has come. And that's why hormones has a direct, because the right hormones, in a way, when you are young, in the process of menstruation, orders the body to fill up the gaps, or at least repair the gaps, or cover them. When you get to the point of, uh, what you call, uh, the menopause, there is a disturbance, part of the information is lost, the body does not replace the holes, doesn't fill up. And then you see it as, as you see, prostate and weakness in the, in the hip, and then the hip fracture. And usually with the hip fractures, then it comes that through the poisoning of the, depending how the skin of the bone has been damaged and it's been interfered with. And then that caused partially through the poisoning of the blood. Uh, Elliot can explain to you when it happens. When the um, content of or chemicals from the bone are released into the bone structure, into the blood uh, circle. Next question. Um, Mr. Kesh, I had a question regarding that. Uh, how, how would the emotional part of the brain, or what some people might call the essence, um, affect that por porosity um, with that bone problem? It, it, can it be affected uh, somehow through the emotional part of the brain? Once the damage is already Depends done. Depends where it is, and what it is. They call it sometimes brittle bone. For example, uh, if you have prostitutes or you have weak bones, you have to understand what has caused that in the structure. Not everything is emotionally based, but emotion have an effect on part of the operation, which does not release uh, the right uh, uh, information for the bones to create the right vibration to convert the lymph into the calcium uh, plasmatic gravitational magnetic field. So could, to understand. could could someone change their attitude or their uh, belief system or, or somehow well, do some kind of meditation or something? Uh, partially, maybe yes, partially in a way no, because it is built into your DNA, RNA base. Okay, would, would prayer... Sometimes would, it can would, be help, uh, somebody can trigger it. Would prayer help, either doing it for the, with the I person doing or someone doing it for I them? I don't know, <laughs> okay. I don't know, I can't answer That's you that. It's pushing no, it you don't much. go and break, you don't go break your bone and sit in there and pray, now heal, now heal, because my emotional side says you heal. You can, you can create a condition to speed up the, the process. The, it's very easy, you can, you can, uh, we had this discussion with Elia, and I've explained this before. Uh, you can create conditions uh, that, uh, in a way, the, 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 the environment that uh, allows the production of the calcium for repairs or increase of the, or increase of the uh, conversion of the lymph into calcium at a given point in different condition. As I explained to you, I've done that to myself, in my own case, uh, about four years ago. And it's well documented, and it's been it's, it's been everywhere. Um, I broke ten ribs, and within more or less seven eight days, there were no sign of fracture. I mean, there were signs of fracture, but all the fractures on the broken bone ribs were totally, what do you call it, healed up. They can't because the technology, the knowledge is there. I've done it for myself, and. Um, Every process has been documented in the hospital. Uh, you can do. You can create condition to uh, to change the condition of brittle bone or the speed of the process. But you got to be there when the in the, the skin 
irritation and the cut of the blood vessels on the skin of the, um, what do you call it, um, on the point of the fracture, are fresh. Then you, you there, because of the activities, you increase it and then you can allow the conversion of the lymph into calcium in a very, very rapid way. And it uses a very, very, very low uh, gravitational magnetic field current flow. If, uh, if in, in, the, in the near time, we'll show this, as Armand is producing a smaller and a smaller reactors, uh, in the coming time, we show you a small reactors, which you can, as a set, as a system, you can put at the point of fracture, and you can uh, heal up the broken bones within a matter of days, hours. Would that but be with a, with a... Would that be with a direct application, or would it be with the fields around the object that would be used? Yes, you you create the same, what you do, what your bone does inside the bone to convert the calcium, convert the plasma within the limbs to calcium to become part of your bone, because the oldest piece of your body is your, your thymus, your, what do you call it, your femur, which is nine years old, part of it. And that's due totally to his mass and his size. Uh, because even the calcium in your body gets, has a life cycle and it gets absorbed, it loses its life cycle, gets absorbed and gets, uh, what do you call it, disposed of through your disposal system. But uh, you can create the same kind of vibration and the plasmatic gravitational magnetic field at the point of the fracture, at the point of the break, at the point of the creation. So you can allow, create gravitational magnetic field where the amputation has taken place for a leg, for example, in the future, that it creates gravitational magnetic field of, um, what do you call it, the calcium of the bone of the amputated position, and you allow the bones to grow because the, the information coming from the brain for the development is there and it gets responded back to and you grow. This is how we grow the tall five years ago, six years ago, with the lady, the pictures is well documented, it's on the internet. But it's just trying to teach, in the, in the coming, now that we start the medical side, at this moment, for the next few months, we try to call the theoretical part. And then, uh, we start teaching how to make these systems. How to be able to do these systems, that um, physicians can do it, hopefully, we have, we will receive more doctors and people who understand both sides of the mechanical, electrical and the plasma conditions and the medicine, or what I call the biology of the man, then they can build so much easier. We have started, as you know, this process now, uh, now we are working directly with, with doctors who slowly, slowly I'm trying to teach to take over. We have uh, a number of doctors around the world who will start monitoring their volunteers, monitoring the process of the volunteers, and then I start teaching them how uh, how the system works, and then how to build the systems for different uh, occasions and uh, problems. This is the same thing that in the bone structure, um, any bone, you call it a bone cancer, uh, or the bone, secondary bone cancer through, uh, through, what do you call it, through other cancers. These all can be reversed, can be allowed to be reversed, and the new fresh bone calcium to be produced at the point of need. Where you see the, what has been damaged or been softened through lift density, to, to the calcium that is become the strength of the, of the, of the matter, and the calcium level. Then you understand in so many ways, why when a man dies, only bone is left behind. Because the bone conversion in the calcium, is in a specific way, very much near, but not exactly, near enough to the, um, to the calcium structure under the 
atmospheric gravitational condition of this planet. That's why it does not get its own stays as a bone. I have written a paper why uh, the bone of the man stays behind in majority of the cases, unless the field's condition are changed, which then uh, it like uh, flesh, this, uh, what do you call it, uh, dissolves back into the gases. The, there is a direct connection in how and what and the way the bones stay behind and they don't, uh, that's the only bits we find as calcium as the man exists. Any other question? I have one question, sir. I just uh, want to clarify for all the public what is the difference between the molecule of calcium and the magraph state of calcium? And uh, we uh, understand that calcium is one molecule, but we have different kind of magraph state of calcium, and they storage in a different in different place of our body. So could you please clarify this? Um, in a way, yes, in a way, even though everything looks like calcium, what you call molecular, is not a molecular, is a, very much like a Gans, in a, in a, a more, uh, less water connection between it, what we call the Gans of calcium, is connected to different elements, which are, attached to it, as part of the plasmatic condition. What this means is that, um, the bones in different, uh, the calcium in different part of the same bone, has a different field of strength that it can expand into. And that, is that uh, sponginess of the same calcium, compared to the hardness of it in the middle, is uh, created and dictated by what material in gravitational magnetic field strength have been made available by the brain in that environment. Very much like cartilage. The cartilage, the reason you have the spongy bit immediately under the cartilage, is because the texture, the gravitational magnetic field of cartilage, allows separation of the calcium in a much open way. The, what we call gravitational magnetic positioning, or in a way that there is a more a space for it to grow, so it creates the effect or the look or the uh, appearance of the sponginess. When you get to the middle of the bone, that is not needed. So, the bone create, gets created from the top and it comes down to the center, it gets absorbed into, due to its maturity, into the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the bone marrow. And then it becomes part of the T cells and B cells and depends when this calcium, as a gravitational magnetic, not, not molecular, is uh, reached a field of strength, at that point, joins or gets absorbed into the bone marrow, and then it becomes part of the strength of the immune system. And depending on what, uh, radioactive, material strength, it will carry with itself. And then what the body allows as a, a potassium, calcium connection to be part of the potassium 40, to be absorbed, and at the same time, the carbon in the amino acid will convert into the part of the energy source through hydrogen to the, to the, what do you call it, to the bone marrow. 
This I have explained in the paper. So, we don't look at the molecular calcium, we look at the magnetic gravitational as a GANS, and then according to that position of the GANS and the environment around it, it dictates how spongy, how tight the, the, the calcium becomes. And then the material which are converted within that material, within this gravitational magnetic field, have a direct effect on the calcium and the merger of the fields of the material and the calcium. Then you see them as a um, calcium with uh, phosphor, calcium with zinc and other things which they distribute around the body of the man. We don't look at it as a molecular. Molecular uh, calcium is matter state and in the body we don't have a matter. We, everything is in a cancer state, gravitational magnetic field and that's why uh, calcium changes. But in the condition of the Earth gravitational magnetic field, it, it is near enough to the molecular that it shows itself as to be molecular calcium. Okay, thank you, sir. So, uh, Sandus have a question. Can sodium depletion weaken the structure of the bone? Pardon? Can sodium, natrium, supplementation weaken the structure of bone? I think he's meaning, what is the relation between sodium, between natrium and calcium in structure of the bone? Can they convert to each other or how they are related to each other? They is are related to each other, uh, but... Uh, yeah, if I, I may add uh, to the, this question, uh, I was asking about sodium depletion. So if somebody uh, has a very limited intake of sodium, can that uh, cause a weakening of the bones? Can you give I exactly think what when you, you have a less level of natrium in your body, can be this cause so, to uh, uh, decrease level of calcium? Increase it can affect the it can if can affect it, but not directly. Yeah, it, not the, it depends on the, it depends on the environment which is it's created and is working. Because uh, depends the uh, the sodium behaves as a metal, or it behaves as a magrav of the metal in a given condition. This, 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 um, uh, this, I, I see this because in, uh, in Africa they use this, um, what do you call it, um, the liquid with the water, which is a mixture of salt and sugar for the people who have diarrhea, the children who have diarrhea. Changing the salt content and that salt uh, as a sodium affects the operation of the lymph as it crosses its energy. Plus, in conjunction with the, uh, what do you call it, the um, hydrogen uh, carbon bond of the sugar. Then you see that affecting, and then in some cases, if the condition is within, uh, within certain range, they can work and affect each other, yes. Uh, they got to understand in what shape and how, in what position it comes to be. It can affect, it can interact, but it, the interaction is on a plasmatic level, not as a sodium, as an element. Uh, Mr. Kesh, is the radioactive form of sodium um, play a part in the body? Explain yourself. Well, <clears throat> um, I understand that there's a form of sodium, uh, sodium-22 isotope, uh, 
that is radioactive. And we know that, like for other elements, um, uh, potassium has been uh, talked about, potassium-40, and how important uh, radioactivity in the body is to make uh, cell division occur and that kind of thing. I'm wondering if sodium might play a part in that. Um, and, and is the radioactive form of sodium part of what you call GANs, or is that totally not associated with uh, having that higher energy isotope form necessary? Does that make sense? You just because what happened, a lot of ways we digest and we have, in all the salts we, we use, it's not all the same. We always have a factor of radioactive to the decays of the material, of any element in the body. That's right, Even there's, the uh, there's always a trace amount, right? One out of a million or a billion atoms or so whatever are, are going to be radioactive. Just it's natural. Yeah, but that uh, that energy, it just gets transferred into the plasma of the lymph. Into the plasma of the lymph. Of the lymph, yeah. There are uh, we 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 are considering at the moment there is a there is a process uh, which uh, at the moment I've been working on in past few months in respect to uh, the amount of radiation which has been inhaled and digested and getting digested in Fukushima. So, uh, this radioactive material didn't just fall on the land, it has been inhaled, digested on regular basis within the intestines of these people in Japan. Uh, uh, looking uh, at... Also, uh, can, can I just uh, throw in a little piece of information that I've also found about that, is radon gas, which is uh, happens in the basements of people in many places in around the world, um, is uh, enough that you are inhaling roughly 25,000 radon molecules per breath, and that's what we deal with uh, on an average around the planet. It's in the atmosphere already, so our we body, need, our uh, body works with that. It it knows what to do with body. To do with it. Body will not divide. The body of the man will not divide, evolve, recycle uh, without the radioactive material. The whole purpose of creation, the whole process of creation, evolved, based, and done through radiation and radioactive materials. From the uh, seconds that you are, uh, what do you call it? You, the first fetus is created, the first uh, uh, division is created in the body. That division will not happen if there is not energy for it to be given that division can be created. There is no life, there is no existence on this planet, which is any kind of life, is a planet life without existence and presence of uh, radioactive condition. But it depends on what level and how you receive it. We've seen people in Ch in Japan now, they've been eating, drinking, breathing, uh, cesium, tritium, every other kind of... Um, uh, you don't want to know the list of radioactive materials which are at the moment in Fukushima on the land. I've been given a list by the authorities and it frightens me to death. But, that's the reason I start looking. What happened to these people? None of them are dropping dead. They're still inhaling it, they're still touching the, the ground, they're still playing, they're still swallowing so much radioactive material. Well, how does the body react to this so much radiation? We don't see any of them glowing. We don't see any of them, what do you call it, going around with the radioactive detectors and seeing them going blah, 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 blah. This shows that the body has created within this process a barrier of not accepting certain radiation over a certain limit. 
we know this exists in the intestine. So, when there is a high density, unless it, it passes through a different way, the body finds a way to, uh, very much like the way we put the guns of CO2, um, and the gas of copper oxide in Fukushima, uh, into the soil, and we saw how the radiation diminished uh, so rapidly. The in the, in the intestine, this is what we are looking in now, the body must be producing a specific type of GANS that does not even go in, in, in the stomach, that does not even reaches the intestine to be absorbed by the body to become part of the lymph. So, it neutralizes these radiations. We've seen it, we've done it, and the Italian Nuclear Center confirms the, the, the finding. And now the Japanese uh, authorities in checking documents have confirmed the same. So, um, one of the wonders has been with Fukushima, what happened with all this radiation these people are eating and drinking? How does it get neutralized that we don't see it in the body? Partially some of it will will come through the intestine and will be absorbed, but we will see as different diseases in the future, or changes, not diseases. But, what happens with this massive uh, inhale and intake of the radioactive, high radiation material? The only conclusion at the moment we can look at is that the acidity within the, uh, with the enzymes of the body convert themselves as they should do, we've seen, into a GANS state, of the CO2, or a cancer stuff, copper oxide, that they uh, absorb, or invert these radiations to themselves, and as you go to the toilet, we dispose of it. Because we do not see any traces in the urine, or not that much. So, our body automatically does what we have shown in Fukushima, uh, instantaneously converts the radioactive material, and even there is a high possibility that in our saliva, the brain does it automatically through the saliva. Saliva, even it looks like a water, it's a gans liquid state. So, um, you don't see so much mouth cancer and tongue cancer, even with these people breathing so much. Uh, of the radioactive material. This is a process I'm looking at for some times now, for, in respect to, to high radiation, radioactive area of the Fukushima. And this has given us a good insight about the resilience of the body of the man, and not necessarily all radiations are dangerous. Because the body finds a way to cascade them and get rid of them. I think one of the things which I even suggested, there is a meeting going on next week with the, with the in respect to Fukushima and Keshe Foundation. Um, uh, and uh, one of the things we have to look at, or look into, is the, the what do you call it, uh, the process of discharge, and what's in the discharge of the body of the man in the solid state. How much radiation, and in what form the radiation is getting discharged. And then it gives us a very good insight that how come this radiation does not get transferred, or this energy does not get transferred through know, the lymph of the body. So it must be cascaded before, otherwise we should see a lot of throat cancers, we should see a lot of mouth cancers. We don't see that, uh, we see thyroid cancer, because that comes through the uh, closest of the thyroid gland on the saliva, which sits under the tongue. The radiation release is very rapid, and it's at the length which interferes, or interacts, or gets, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, amalgamated with the, with the lymph cells. Um, Mr. Kesh, I've done a little research with the radon gas, and it's the second largest uh, cause of lung cancer in uh, North America, at least, and I think in the world, in, in, uh, uh, in that sense, behind smoking. 
Yeah. But it is a problem in places uh, that are in developed countries that have concrete basements and that kind of thing, but it's in the atmosphere all the time. But it's most people don't have a problem with it. It's only very rare. It depends what condition you have within your lung. Again, is the condition that which they is did, like asthmatic. They did find out that if you're a smoker and exposed to the radon gas, then it more than doubles your uh, uh, chances of lung cancer in that case. So it is multiplied it's that way, like you say. Yeah. It's a condition you create in the environment of your lung. Don't forget your lung is a huge, massive radioactive reactor. And it's full of extreme ultraviolet. If the scientists send the extreme ultraviolet at a very, very high dosage, but very low, what do you call it, capacity, they'll be surprised how much radiation is going on in there. It's the same thing as the upper atmosphere. It's the same conditions, a replication of the same thing. Any other question? We were supposed to have this session for two hours. Elia wanted it not to extend. Now yeah, we pass. We just finished with the last one uh, question from the live stream. This is uh, Could you explain effect if man stays for a longer, longer time in a zero gravity environment? Pardon? I will repeat. Could you, Mr. Cash, explain effect on the bone structure if the man stays for a longer time in a zero gravity environment, like astronauts or you use the We spaceship? already know that. In a spaceship, you don't have uh, zero gravity. In a spaceship program, you have exactly 1G. As I always said, and the guys in NASA laugh, I said, the, the what do you call it, floating man in the space, what do you call it, zero gravity, uh, or weightlessness, it's actually in one part of the cash space uh, uh, program, a couple of years ago we used to have. You have to pay extra for us to create weightlessness for you in the space, because it costs money to do it. When you, <laughs> Armand is laughing, he said, because he's working on these small reactors at the moment. So, what it is, uh, because you create gravitational magnetic field environment, you always are at 1G. Uh, what we've seen, the space suits and the spaceman, these are the games of NASA and it's over. This weightlessness does not exist. But, if you stay in, in the space with a, what they call, um, lower gravity magnetic field, you affect the same thing as you do, we see in the operation of the, the spongy part of the body. You create different environment, different gravitational magnetic field, then the, pr the field, the strength and pressures are different, then you, you're bound in the long term to extend the bones or shorten the bones. But uh, weightlessness and change of the structure of the body, these are all finished. This, this, this is this is done and buried with the uh, gravitational magnetic field systems. That's what it's called, magravs, magnetic gravity. I had a very interesting email. Uh, the guy says, "Let's forget about magrav. Talk about the rest of the work of the what what we can do with the with the work of the foundation." Because it's so simple, people have to deny it, because then otherwise it shows how stupid they've been for centuries. How can you have life when there is no gravity? And how can you have life when there is no, uh, what you call, magnet, magnetic or, or what we call atmospheric uh, uh, field pressures? It's a combination of the two, and the, our reactors produce both magnetic and gravity, so um, zero magnetic field, zero what they call it, gravity, or what they call weightlessness, it was the it was the time of when man used to wear those heavy suits with steel and go down deep in the ocean. It's over. Now we have really fancy little fancy suits and we go in as deep as we like to go. 
with a couple of, uh, what they call it, backpack oxygen tanks. Weightlessness cells don't exist. You have to pay heavy for it to create a... I'll tell you why, it might look funny or sound funny to you. If you want to create a weightlessness condition in a space, or at least put your outside in the space, that you can feel the zero gravity, as the astronauts do, it's so difficult, because you have to reduce your gravitational magnetic field boundary to a point that you can cross it in the space. Because don't forget, once you have gravitational magnetic field, it's exactly like atmosphere. How do you get in it? How do you get out of it? You have to literally shoot the people in a specific angle out of your craft that you can end up in the space. It costs a lot, it takes a lot of time. It looks a fun, it will be done. But uh, it's very much, you have to shoot somebody out in a specific angle that they can get out of your gravitational magnetic field zone. But you do this by sending up satellites of your, what do you call it, spaceship. This is one of the part of the defense technology which we'll teach very soon. Every craft, every satellite can be literally remotely attached to and removed through the same process. You open a um, condition, you create a condition that you can literally um, target a, a satellite or a craft which gets attached to and on its own, you can remove it without ever coming back to you. If a satellite contaminated, is a body contaminated with the radioactivity, you don't want to bring it back into the spacecraft. You launch a remote uh, craft, which can leave your spacecraft in a safe condition, and still you don't lose your... Um, for defense technology people, if they knew what they can, and we start teaching it. Because we don't teach it for defense, as it is today, we teach it because it will be needed very soon. Now that we have all these rogue satellites floating everywhere and everything else, we wait for them and pray that when they come back in, they will not land on top of our head or on top of our house. Very soon, they'll be captured in a very easy way from through the space technology, and they'll be disposed up into the open space beyond the atmosphere. Because a lot of them are contaminated, heavily contaminated, you don't want them back in. Then you don't want to go there and catch them and tow them. So, weightlessness, go and speak to boys in NASA. They love to talk about it, because they have huge swimming pools practicing it. <laughs> Next question. I think we should uh, probably end things there. It's been uh, well over the two mm -hmm. hours that we expected. What do you think, Elia? Would you like to have a yeah. final uh, ending? We need to have oh. information for the next part. We'll speak next Friday at 2 o'clock again. Yeah. And thank okay. you so thank much. Thank you very much, Elia. And for everyone, and I want to apologize again for the lie about the technical problems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, and goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. See you soon. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. Adia. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Boy, that was great. We'll do, do better next time with the technical, and uh, it'll, it'll all get sorted out. It's a good first effort, I think. Okay, I'm going to shut down the live stream now.